What's going on, guys? <laughs> My name is Jonathan. Shaken. Today, Good I am bye. joined by the lead singer of Shaken, James Harris. What's up, brother? <laughs> and What's Tim up? Collins. Tim Collins lives really close to the uh, the theme park that uh, James Harris, when he was in Shaken, he went to. Uh, what was the name of that place again, James, in Ohio, Cedar Point? Oh, uh, Cedar Point, man. It's the only theme park in America. <laughs> yeah, it was good. America's stuff. roller coast, man. Uh, right that doesn't... That doesn't check out. <laughs> it's the hey, only really, thing they, have some, they really have some dope uh, rides over there, Lucas. They have some really fast roller coasters over there. You like roller is, coasters? There's no other place, bro. And this is Lucas too. <laughs> Lucas is a uh, he's a, another famous musician that's that's joining us. Today. Oh man, <laughs> worldwide what a, famous. What a show we have! <laughs> Full of talent today. So today we're going to discuss some of our least favorite comic book movies. These are the ones that stick out to us the most when we think of, okay, you got your Dark Knights and you got your Avengers and then you got your Swamp Things and then you got your Nick Fury Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. starring David Hasselhoff as Nick Fury. So these are the movies that really stick out to us that are terrible. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Who said Swamp Thing was terrible? <laughs> James. I've never, I've never seen anybody get thrown the way those people are thrown. <laughs> <laughs> James and I watched this film. I don't know if you guys have you guys ever seen the Swamp Thing movie? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I just a few months ago watched just clips of it because my wife was talking about how they watched it when they were a kid and how her and her older brother and sister they loved it. And so started pulling up watching. It. I'm just like, oh, oh boy, this is. <laughs> Some quality entertainment right here, but main villain literally looks like he's wearing a Halloween mask, like a Halloween wolf mask. And uh, yeah. I think it, I think the final conclusion fight between Swamp Thing and the villain that is a sword fight, and also the way Swamp Thing tears the roof of a Humvee off and when he throws <laughs> it, it literally just goes up and keeps going up, like because the shot of the camera, I guess it wasn't supposed to be so high. I guess it was supposed to just go all the way up on this elevator thing or whatever they had it on. But he threw it the, the top of the Humvee off and it literally just went up like a hundred feet. <laughs> nice. The special effects are dated. Let's just uh say that, okay. So that's that's one for me that sticks out a lot in my mind. I know me and James watched that years back. I think I had gotten that on DVD back in the mid-2000 era, somewhere in there, and that's back when we were watching DVDs on PS2s, and we had watched yeah. that at some point, but it still sticks out a lot. Even then, even in 2005, we were laughing at this movie, so that's how bad yeah. it is. What you, what you got, Mr. Tim? I know you got something. Oh, buddy, well – I've got, I mean, I've got a list, but I, I don't have time to go through them all one by one. I mean, there's, I'll just give you a few of the honorable mentions and then I'll kind of land on one in particular. But um, I think when, when I look at a bad movie, the, the, the first thing that I have to analyze as to what makes it bad is the time period. I mean, it, it did it have the capability of being a good movie? You know, I look at the, the Adam West 1966 movie you know, with the rubber shark and the shark repellent bat spray. And when he's got the big Acme bomb that he's running around with and everything, he doesn't want to throw it on the ducks and all that, that never had the capability of being a good movie. So I can't really include it, even though it's a terrible movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, there, there was never a budget. There was never a good studio backing. There was never a good director. The acting was always going to be bad. We already knew what Adam West was. So we, it, it was never going to be a good movie. So I can't really call that the worst of all time, you know, but when I look at um, one movie that I've kind of landed on in particular is Howard the Duck. And I'll tell you why. Okay. <laughs> the reason I've landed on Howard the Duck is because it, it came out in 1986. Okay. And, uh, and, and it was backed, it was backed yeah. by Lucasfilm. All right. I want you guys to think about that. Lucasfilm decided to get into comic book movies and the one they decided to do was Howard the friggin' duck, okay? Of course, and so, why not? And so it sandwiched right in between three very successful Superman movies and the first and the first movie of the Batman fr franchise for Tim Burton, sandwiched right in between those, they decided to do Howard the Duck. They did it with a $35 million budget. And it, I mean, let's just call it what it was, man. It was a guy in a duck costume doing karate 
it, it was it was terrible. The acting was terrible. The music was terrible. Special effects were terrible. Um, so it, if I was Lucasfilm, why, why wouldn't you go all in on Spider-Man? Why wouldn't you go all in on the Incredible Hulk? Why wouldn't you go all in on something that had the capability of being successful? Um, you know, he had just $35 million. He had just done Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom like a, a few years prior with $22 million. So he wow. had the budget to do a good movie and he ended up doing a bad movie. So that's kind of say for, for the 80s, 35, 35 million. million. That yeah. was a large, large budget for the yeah. 80s. Really it large. It was. I if mean, all, and, if only and, they hadn't put 15 million in that suit. Yeah. Oh, dude, it was, was terrible. Fire. <laughs> And it, it only broke budget by a million dollars. So, I mean, that's, for me, that's my number one, just because of the time period. It had the possibility of being successful. They just totally, they just totally dropped the ball on the selection of, of, of the character that they decided to focus on. They, they dropped the bu budget on, I mean, th this, this is kind of where we got to see who George Lucas really was, <laughs> you know, yes. making all the, all the boneheaded decisions where he's overthinking the room like he did when he rebooted the star wars franchise so Episode one. Anyway, hello how that? are you doing look i found that howard the duck book at a yard sale when i was probably 20 and I'd never had heard of it before anything about howard the duck and yeah i mean it's an actual book and i got it and i was like because it said something that you know like from the studio that it was like it came out with the movie or something you know yeah and it was like from the studio that brought you Indiana Jones or something like that. And I was like, well, oh, that's kind of weird. Let's read the book. <laughs> pretty good. Pretty good book. As far as I remember. I mean, that's been 15 yep. years ago. I enjoyed the book. And then I was like, okay, so there's a movie. I'm going to try to find this movie. So, you know, 20 years, that was 2005 ish. Okay. So I found, I got them to, if I remember right, the little in Meville, Mississippi, I got them to um, order that DVD or something like that. The, or I can't even remember if it was a DVD. Somehow I got a hold of that movie and watched the entire thing. I remember I was <laughs> sitting, sitting at my grandmother's house and I was sitting there and I watched the whole thing like this. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Bless your heart. That's like, what am I looking at right now? I do. Wasn't the guy from um? I can't remember his name. The the bag. The principal from Ferris Bueller was he like the bad guy in that? I'm pretty sure the principal from Ferris Bueller's Day Off is like the bad scientist in in that. In Maybe that. it's probably it's quite possible. He's a great '80s bad guy. Loved him, but that. I can't even, I, I guess I blocked out that movie. But Leah I do, Thompson couldn't even was, save that movie. I mean, Leah Thompson no. was an A-lister and she couldn't even save that movie, okay? Right. You know? <laughs> yeah, as far as Howard the Duck goes, I don't remember much about that other than I did see it when I was a kid. And I just thought it was some funny movie about a duck. <laughs> I didn't know there was anything else about it. You know, I remember- By, the, it, by the way, we don't have to keep talking about Howard the Duck. If you guys, we could just talk about movies that stand out to you personally. No. Like, uh, yeah, so Howard the Duck. This whole episode. That's uh, all we're gonna talk about. <laughs> I'll, I'll 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 do one because like for me it was it was one that like I had hopes that would actually be good and it always strikes me as one of the first movies I think about that sucked when it came to like trying to adapt the comic book universe and that was the uh, I think it's two thousand three Hulk maybe early two thousand you know, yeah worst animation Hulk, but, ever uh, Eric Banner yeah. right so you know remember seeing the previews thinking man this might be like one of the first like cool modern you know, like superhero comic book type movies that we'll get. And went to the theater, dude, and saw it, and I don't know, I might as well slip. And there wasn't even much to remember. It's, Boring. it's like maybe, maybe some good ideas, but never translated well. All the weird, like, comic cutscene things and all that, man. It's the comic like, book panels. Yeah, yeah totally, totally broke up just, any continuity. Yeah, yeah and like I said, I think, I think maybe good ideas just not executed well, but for, for me, that's like, for whatever reasons, one of the first ones always that stands out to me is like just a total letdown, you know, as far as far as what it could have been. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's probably, probably my, I would say that's probably my number one, just off the top of my head. And, you know, even like the the dog scene where he's fighting the uh, the Hulk dogs or whatever. Giant poodle. Yeah. 
everything about that movie, man, it was just like, how did how did they think that this was actually going to be a good idea or good, you know, entertaining to watch? I don't know. It's just it's crazy how these studios get so caught up with the creative process. We talked about that on our last episode, but, you know, you just get so caught up in that process of making the movie and you get so excited about doing different things that you just get blinded. You know, it's almost like that old saying, you can't see the forest for the trees. It's crazy. <clears throat> One that sticks out a lot to me, the first Ghost Rider film with Nicolas Cage was, was decent. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't a terrible film to me. The second one, however, that was a sequel to that movie was yeah. god awful. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. And I can mm -hmm. remember seeing the trailers for that and thinking, you know, hey, this looks pretty cool. It looks like they're going to go in a darker, grittier direction, you know, and maybe we're going to see some a little bit of violence in this one. You know, I thought, I don't know if that's actually rated R or not. I don't think it is. But, mm -hmm. um, but anyway, the movie Vengeance. came out and it was I don't think I've to this day watched the full movie. I've had it on DVD since like it, since the release. Cause I didn't watch it in theaters, but I maybe because it had like a short theatrical window or something. I can't remember what the reason was, but when it came out on DVD, I just bought it right away. Cause I couldn't wait to see it. You know, I was so hyped up about it. And then I watched it and I was <clears throat> let down big time. Now he looked better. Like, yeah, Ghostwriter actually looks better in that movie. If I remember, my goodness, it's and his so transformation. I think yeah. his his yeah his jacket and like his skull, the way the flames and everything looked a lot better. If I remember right, but yeah, it was it was out there for sure. Mm -hmm. Yep, I love the first one with though um, mm -hmm. Sam Elliot. What's it? Sam yes, Elliot. Thank Elliot. you. Mm -hmm. That was that was awesome. I mean, of course, she can't beat that dude. Yeah, that that <laughs> one. You know, it was fun when it came out. When it first came out. Oh, but did they ride the horse and the motorcycle together? Like, <laughs> yeah, they did. Yeah, what? yeah that, was, that was going that places, some buddy. About it that were that were pretty cool, you know. But ultimately, it doesn't hold up as well now, you know, um, nowadays. But. And Nicolas Cage is a nutcase too, you know. <laughs> you know we got you know, like he really is a good person to play that role, you know. I don't know. The, the the first one had a lot of flaws too, you know. We're not. I'm not saying by any means that that's a good film. <laughs> I mean, I enjoyed it when it came out at the time, but you know, yeah. it, it doesn't really hold up that well. It's kind of like that we were talking about the Spider-Man films, you know, especially the first Spider-Man, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movie that green goblin performance when it while it was good it it's it's different now you know it's kind of now hard to yeah, watch, yeah going back and watching it it's <laughs> like i remember it being way cooler and way scarier yeah and but now I, I really think that's just now you can kind of see the special effects yeah that aren't you know that aren't as good and Special at the effects time, were they were right, and at the time they were amazing. Mm -hmm. And there's so many. There's a lot of him taking, like, running on the street and like taking off, you know. And it's like, hey, you got to do that better <laughs> for sure because yeah. it doesn't look real at all. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember at the time, I remember the first time I seen that movie. That was the coolest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh and yeah. It made it you look back now. You're like, can I do? better special effects on my home pc than that <laughs> i feel like i may can you know <laughs> yeah and i don't even know how to do them but i feel like i can watch a couple youtube videos and do it <laughs> like <laughs> what's some other bad horrible superhero movies that stand out to you guys i've got a list do you want me to just run through them real quick sure. okay. I've, got, I've, I've got of course the the fantastic four movies all of them let's just scrap them all um you know, especially especially the Silver Surfer. We got to I mean, Fun fact. Galactus Galactus being a big cloud. Forget that. So that's that's probably up there. Um, you know that the one I think the 1990 Captain America movie with the rubber suit that, that was terrible. Yeah, that was terrible. Uh, yeah. Dolph, Dolph Lundgren's <laughs> Punisher movie. Yeah. Uh, Dolph Lundgren's Punisher movie was just awful. Um, yeah, I think, uh, and I think um, we. I can't. I can't get out of here without mentioning the Joel Schumacher Batman franchise. Uh, both those movies were just garbage, awful. So there you go. 
Now, Fun I've fact. seen them. Which ones were both of his? Which uh, ones Batman were... Forever and Batman and Robin. Okay. So one so, yeah, which one is the nipples? Batman. The ones with the nipples on the suit. Yes, the nipples. Yes. Is that one of them? Bad that, nipples. That's absolutely For sure. his. Yes, oh, bad, bad nipples. nipples made their yeah. debut. You got Arnold Schwarzenegger. Everybody freeze. You know, that's, that's yeah. just, I nice. mean, you know. Classic. Jim, Jim Carrey just out there being his standard ADHD self and all kinds of, I mean, it was just. It was I love just, that. It was just a crazy, I mean, you know, Tommy <clears> Lee Jones. Tommy Lee Jones couldn't save that franchise. That's how bad it was. And then um, both the choices that he did for Batman, George Clooney and Val Kilmer were, were bad choices for different reasons. And yeah, just bad all the way around. I think those movies. I love no too. ever enigma though, boy. <laughs> I, 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 I love, I love it every, every single time. Every time I just, I think those movies. I don't know. I don't know if it's towards, cause... towards children a lot more, you know, like, cause at yeah. the time when, when I was a kid, that was cool. You know, like Batman and Robin, Batman forever when I was a kid, but it didn't take long for me to realize that those movies are extremely cheesy, you know, but I, I think that was their yeah. goal. And, you know, you can say what you want to about those films, but that it was made a lot of money. money. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> exactly. And, uh, you know, that generation of children, you know, all went uh -huh. to the theaters to go see it. So, I mean, I think that's what it was. I think they were trying to go for that cheesier, more uh, campy style that we were talking about with the Adam West Batman. And also they were trying to capitalize on the, you know, the Happy Meals and things like that. So, which Freaking they did. But action figures, baby. Yeah, I had a lot of those when I was a kid. But <laughs> fun fact, you mentioned the, uh, the the rise of the Silver Surfer. Back in uh, 2006 or 2000, when did that come out? I think that was, yeah, 2006. Six, seven, somewhere in that neighborhood. Somewhere yeah. in 06, 07, uh, James Herod and myself, as well as some of our other <laughs> bandmates, went to go see that in a theater together. That was in Florida, James? I think so, man. Yep, we were on tour, and uh, we did like a six-week <laughs> tour of the whole eastern part of the U.S. It was either Florida yes. or Texas. I can't remember. Yeah, somewhere in there. But, you know, we didn't make a dime, by the way. We only spent dimes on uh, hamburgers from McDonald's <laughs> and, and uh, <laughs> gas station. <laughs> gas station, yeah. So, so, anyway, we saw that together in theaters, and we both – at the time, I think we thought it was okay, which which yeah. speaks to our opinions of that <laughs> of that era. Half half the movie half the movie is just the thing not being able to do stuff. You know, it's just like oh he broke the glass and oh he can't fit in the car yeah. and oh you know that's half the movie is seeing what he can't do as the thing. So I don't know. It was I I all the Fantastic Four movies have been awful. The most recent one. The most recent one was probably the worst, but, um, yeah. you know, to be honest, I, 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 I didn't see it in theaters. I rented it for, you know, for a dollar and I got halfway through. It was just like not not finishing. So, yeah, they were uh, I was down in Baton Rouge when they were filming that the parts of that. And, um, you know, I didn't see them do anything, but they had, you know, it all set up in there. And so I was like. Oh, so I, you know, maybe I can recognize something. I'm so pumped about seeing that movie just because we were down there and saw part of it. And it was another one of those. Yeah. Watch like that, you know, the whole time, like, what is this garbage? Just. I was so excited to see Galactus when they introduced him, too. I was just like, Galactus <laughs> is going to be in this movie. This is going to be amazing, <laughs> you know? And then it was this cloud. And I was like, oh, what is going on? You know, so anyway, very disappointing. I think in in that time period, they were still really nervous to introduce a giant man that's as large as planet Earth or larger than planet Earth. That's large enough to literally like take Earth and like a ball it. and just <laughs> and eat, eat it. it. You know? yes, I <laughs> so I think that even that concept now is a little, you know, like, yeah, especially the Warner Brothers. You take a, a studio like Warner Brothers and they're nervous or gun shy to do anything, right? Oh, yeah. Especially make a, a you know a movie about a guy that can do something like that. So I kind of get it. I get I get why they made that decision in 2005, 2006. <clears throat> but yeah, ultimately when you look back at all these poor decisions that we look at today, we view as a poor decision, it was because they didn't stick to the source material, you know? And ultimately, you got to make the comic book fans happy first. Then you try to, to arrange it or do it in a way that it also appeals to the mainstream. 
And that's what Marvel are so good at doing. You know, they've taken the Guardians of the Galaxy characters that nobody knew who the heck, you know, Rocket Raccoon <laughs> was back in 2006. You know, now he's like a mainstream character. You know, little kids are buying Rocket Raccoons and Groots, baby Groots, you know. So <clears throat> it's it's pretty crazy how they can do that. That's definitely the difference between the successful movies and the bad movies. I feel like the bad movies try to just say like, okay, well, we've got Jessica Alba, so people will come see this movie. And, you know, to a degree, they're right. I mean, you know, we have Jim Carrey. People will come see this movie. Yes, to a degree, you're right. I mean, yeah, it sold a lot of tickets. But the reason that it doesn't stand today is because that was kind of the that was kind of the only selling point that you had for the movie. Uh, Marvel has gone out and got A-list guys, but they've got A-list guys that have complimented the film. So, so anyway, like you said, the source material, very important. I remember another one that sticks out to me is Electra. You guys ever watched that one? <laughs> with jennifer so, gardner yeah 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 there was a lot of poor decisions made in this film too somehow yeah. or another i don't know how they came to the conclusion and, that they were going to have and yet game. i could just always look over all of it and just be okay <laughs> with watching jennifer gardner yeah that lucas red is seat. gonna buy a ticket tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> like just put another one out i'll watch it <laughs> like Catwoman just, too. Uh, but i've always it was the same thing with Catwoman, Halle Berry. It was the same thing, you know, just people will buy the tickets because it's her. That's exactly right. Yeah. I don't know. I've just always been in love with Jennifer Gardner. So I was, I, all I remember, I don't, I remember seeing that movie. I don't remember anything about it except she was in it. <laughs> <laughs> and I therefore, remember at the beginning. Hey, I remember film, positive thoughts about that movie. <laughs> I remember at the beginning of that film, a ninja breaks into her house and he gives her this message from like, you know, the main boss of the film. But anyway, he gives her this message and then he's just like, you will die in six days. Heed my word. And then he just does like this. He goes and he breaks his own neck. Yeah. It's, oh one, of those, my it's, one, it's one of those movies that is so bad that if you watch it now, it's hilarious because there's a yeah, lot yeah. of things in that movie like that. There's another scene where this guy has like a tattoo of a bear on his chest or something like that. And the bear comes out of his chest and it's a real bear, you know, and it comes after. Oh my gosh, I remember. <laughs> but there's a lot of weird, crazy, wacky things that happen in that movie. I'm That's one that sticks out to me. And another one, Green Lantern. Oh, Ryan Reynolds. 2011's yeah. Green Lantern. Uh, yeah. a, friend of, a friend of mine and I went to go see that in theaters back in, tw was that 2011 or was that tw 2010? It was 10 or 11, yeah. yeah I think that was 11, which is crazy. That was only yeah. nine nine or 10 years ago. But anyway, uh, we went to go see that. We were super hyped up, had our popcorn, uh, had our drinks. You know, we were talking about, you know, this movie's going to be awesome. And then it was terrible. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. It was it was bad. It was like, it was it was categorically bad. I mean, that's, that's the reason I didn't trust Ryan Reynolds for the Deadpool films for the longest time was because he actually agreed to that script. So yeah, it, it was a bad, it was a bad film. Piggybacking off of Elektra, I can't believe we didn't talk about the Daredevil movie because that's 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 where it came from. So um, I, I can't believe we didn't talk about it. So many bad decisions made in that movie too. The casting choices, the directing choices, the special effects, everything just was bad in the Daredevil movie as well. So it's been so many years. I remember, and I, you were talking about that earlier, Jonathan. Um, about the Silver Surfer being like, I remember us kind of liking it, you know. And there's At so the many time. of these movies, right? There's so many of these movies that I remember going to see and being like, oh, that was that was good. I enjoyed that. And then you watch it years later and you're like, whoa, that was bad. What was like, why I was that like, because why did I like that? That's all we and had at that I, time. We didn't yeah, have I guess much. So. You know, yeah. I guess as you just learn <laughs> in the more yeah, you get I mean, to it. We had at that time period, the best superhero movies we had were the Spider-Man trilogy and oh. the X-Men films, the one X-Men one and two, whatever, you know, we'd get That's one it. good. We'd get one good comic book movie like every four years. Now we get one every three months. You know, that's yeah. The yeah. it's crazy. So this brings up the question. If you thought it was good at one point and then one day you think it's not good. Which one is it? Because. <laughs> If you enjoyed it and you liked it, then it was good. Mm -hmm. well, and then years later, maybe you don't. Just so, like when I was I don't know. four or five years old, I used to love cabbage. And I used to hate a lot of different things. I used to hate black olives on my pizza. 
But now I love black olives on my pizza and I hate cabbage. So your taste evolve and mature, sure. right? Mm-hmm. And right. Uh, when I was a kid, or what's the Bible verse? Here we go. When I was a child, <laughs> I thought as a child, right? All right. Mm-hmm. So I think that, I mean. Or you could know, do the Mark Norman, the Mark Norman joke about <laughs> when I was a kid, I like grape juice. Now okay. I'm an adult. I like red wine. <laughs> and then you go. the other part of that joke we won't go into <laughs> but yeah it's that's, <laughs> that's kind of what sticks out to me and we've talked about some bad movies we have we've talked about some really really bad ones for sure I think we pretty much covered it oh yeah yeah it's, yeah for sure i think we i think we nailed all of them uh i think i mean you know I, there, are some that, there are some that we could that we could hash on i mean you know the there are several bad movies in the X-Men franchise. Um, there are several bad movies in so many other places. But the, I think I think the, the reason I don't really focus on those as much is because the first two movies in the X-Men franchise were so good that I'm willing to forgive a little bit uh, on, on, the, on the X-Men franchise and still be able to appreciate things in the series, you know, still be able to appreciate Patrick Stewart and still be able to appreciate Hugh Jackman and all that, even though the movies weren't that great after the first two. There's other movies that are not great, but I think that we don't focus on them as much because they're not ones that kind of were stood stood on their own and they're not ones that were bad in an era. So Look, I hear a lot of people talking, I've read about people not liking Thor the Dark World. And like I've only seen that one time, and like it was one of those situations where I remembered enjoying it, and then I hear people talking about how it's not great. What um, I'm just curious about what y'all's opinions on it because I've never actually even talked with, about someone not liking that movie before. Is that one that y'all don't like, or is you know not I, feel that way at all? I'm kind of in the minority. I think when when you talk to a lot of MCU nuts, and I am one, you know, when you talk to a lot of MCU nuts, they kind of they, they always are trying to rank the films in their mind. I'm not really that way. I kind of look at the MCU as a whole. And and when I look at a film, I, I see, is it consistent with the story? And is it consistent with the timeline? Is it consistent with the character development? All of that kind of stuff. And there are some movies that kind of are on the lower tier. Captain Marvel is one of those that I think is a little on the lower tier. The Dark World is not one of my favorites, but I don't think it's incredibly inconsistent with the rest of the franchise. So, yeah. Um, so I'm not I'm not one that goes overboard on that one, but yes, a lot of a lot of MCU nuts do not like it. It's not a it's not a terrible film. It's a it's a film that was maybe just a little bit of a letdown, but you know it's you still have great stuff from uh, Loki and great stuff from Thor. Uh, you know you have some great fight scenes and action in that film as well. I mean, it's the villain was forgettable, sure, you know, but. What MCU villain wasn't forgettable? You know, there was probably more that were forgettable than the were, you know, than there were that were memorable. So yeah, I mean, in my opinion, like he said, it's in the lower tier, but it's still a decent Marvel film. I like that movie. Okay, good. Because I've I've been every time I see that, I'm like, I can't I can't remember not like like not enjoying the movie. I can't remember, you know. Of course, there's not think, too many of those that are. I think a lot of it had to do bad. with timing. I think a lot of it had to do with timing because um, it, it was it was the Marvel film that was released. Was it the one that was released immediately after the Avengers? I'm trying to remember here, but um, but but I'm yes. trying to remember the time. It was the one. You see, not immediately. So, it was Iron Man three, and then Iron Thor Man the three, Dark and then Thor: The Dark World. And so that I think that had to do with it. I think it had to do with the fact that it was the timing was kind of kind of right there where it wasn't very favorable and, and people were like, that was it. You know, we just saw, we just saw this huge budget poured into like all these other characters and all this other stuff. And so that, that's where I think it kind of was. Um, but that's, that's just me. I, I personally, I, I like it. I, I think it's a pretty good film, but I'm a fan. I like it too. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well guys, look, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, it's been fun, been wild, been crazy. We're going to have to do it again soon. Um, so you nobody has anything they want to plug, any businesses or anything like that? Okay. Well, hey, uh, this has been Comic Book Cinema. You can look us up on Instagram at Real Comic Book Cinema. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook. And uh, if you haven't already, make sure you go ahead and like, share, subscribe these videos. Really helps us out a lot when you do that. 
thanks for watching. Guys, like I said, thanks for joining us. And until next time, have a good one. See you later, guys. Bye. Later. Fun.